I don't even know where to begin. Dolores discovers the center of the maze. Maeve makes a break for the exit, and Ford has had a whole different plan than we expected all along. This is how you do a season finale. Just mwah, beautiful. That's right. It's the season one finale of HBO's Westworld, episode 10. The Bicameral Mind. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of the season finale of Westworld. So, there are spoilers ahead, tons of spoilers, all spoilers, you could say. Uh, so really, just an amazing episode. Like I said, this is the way that you end a, a season. We've answered pretty much all of the questions that have been raised throughout this season, uh, and the only things that are left are kind of the teases for what is to come, and there are some amazing looking things to come up in season two. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's, uh, uh, let's go back and sort of wrap up what, what has really been going on. Okay. So, we have way back when, 35 years ago or so, we have uh, Ford and Arnold starting the park. Arnold, of course, did lose his son. Much of Bernard's backstory is, is Arnold's backstory. Arnold did lose his son, and he is kind of losing himself in the creation of the host. Has the idea of the host making that next step, achieving consciousness. And he uses the idea of the bicameral mind. The bicameral mind is actually a uh, from a book called The Origin of Consciousness and the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind uh, by Julian Jaynes. Uh, came out in 1976, which is three years after the original Westworld movie and the same year that its sequel, Future World, came out. Don't know if there's any important relation there. Uh, but this sort of sets up the idea, and that is that the thoughts that people are hearing in their heads before they've achieved a certain level of civilization, and, and James goes into the whole book on this, and he says this is upwards of 3,000 years ago. This is how humanity was. A lot of discussions and breakdowns, and this probably isn't the way that it is, but again, this is just the theory. Uh, and that is, is that the thoughts inside of our heads, we didn't realize was our own thoughts. We thought they were the, the, the talks of the gods. And hopefully, over time, we could start to integrate those ideas into a, a cohesive whole. And Arnold uses this from the idea of, of, of memory, and then improvisation, and then the next step into actual consciousness. The maze idea he gets from his kid's little game, which is a maze, a little ball maze. Um, and that idea is that it's somewhat less of a pyramid and more of a maze, more of a journey through and into oneself, that through memory, through improvisation, through continual practice, and what we learn learning on suffering, a very important idea on this, uh, is that those set desperate parts could be linked back together. Um, James looks at it more of like the right and left sides of the brain, trying to communicate, and you've got the corpus callosum and everything. Again, all getting into deep psychology, uh, but this is kind of the idea, is that the thoughts in our heads we will assign to someone else, and then once we realize that those thoughts are in fact ours, that is how real consciousness uh, is occurred. And that is sort of Dolores' journey throughout all of this, is she is thinking that the conversation she's having in her mind, all the way up until just recently, is with Arnold or with the memory of Arnold and then eventually finds out that the voice that she has been hearing, the voice that she is following is in fact her own voice. And once she does that, she is able to make that step into consciousness. Now this was the plan that, that Arnold had. Once Dolores sort of reached that step, again, way back when, he decided they couldn't open the park had to shut it down because you cannot have conscious hosts existing within the park just at the whim of the guests, of, of, of you know, of sex and violence and all of that craziness, whatever the whims that they have, they can't be continually subjected to this. They, th this would be torture to them. Um, Ford, at the time, dismisses it, and thus Bernard comes up with his plan, and that is that Dolores is going to need to kill all of the hosts and uh, Arnold 
himself um, in order to kind of free everything. They can't have these old memories. They have to be able to be turned back. They have to be reset back to their, their older positions before they were able to achieve this consciousness. And that is the whole thing where Dolores goes and ends up shooting Bernard, or shooting Arnold rather, sorry. Uh, I know, I keep seeing the two of them, it kind of confuses me sometimes too. Um, and sort of freeing him, and that is the step. Now, as Arnold had said, this is not of Dolores' own will. This is a programmed action. And it is activated by the big line, these violent times have violent ends. Uh, which is the big statement that, that Abernathy said at the beginning, which sort of perpetuated this whole idea. Uh, now, after all that was done, Ford obviously reactivated, wiped all of the host memories, reactivated them, tried to bury Arnold, and then opened up the park. Um, not long after that is when William and Logan show up. And William has his old journey with Dolores, who is again starting to re-achieve consciousness. Um, and then after she disappears and William goes and searches throughout the park and breadth and sort of loses his mind in the midst of it, or as he says, discovers himself. He was not one for violence, but then he decided once he had a purpose, finding Dolores, that sort of gelled that idea, and then as Logan had said, he found out that he had a, a purpose, he had a, a talent for it, had a liking for it. Um, and then goes and travels throughout the breadth of the park, and at the end, we see when he ties up Logan on the horse and sends him off the way, that is pretty much him killing Logan. Uh, that's him reaching the end of the park, stripping Logan down, putting him on a horse, and sending him off on his way. I'm sure his body was discovered, and he used the excuse of he was impetuous. He made bad choices. He was drinking, or he was partying, shot a lot of people, went off for a crazy naked ride, and ended up dying of exposure. That is my guess of what happened. They don't specifically say that Logan is dead, but that is really what they have implied. Um, and by the time William found Dolores back again, She'd already been reset. She'd already lost all of the memories and all of the development that she had while on that journey with William. And that sort of perpetuated his return. He saw the value in it. He took over and supported, financially supported the park, which has allowed it to operate all of these years. And then spent the past 30 years going back, doing the he travels with Dolores for a few times, and then after that got tiring, exploring other things. And then we eventually came up to the present. Now, the other big reveal that they had uh, throughout this is that these hosts, Maeve, Bernard, Dolores, all of these things have happened before. Um, periodically through the park, one of these old hosts with all of Arnold's old programming will achieve consciousness, will make that sort of breakthrough, uh, though either they reset or, as Bernard says, they are driven insane. They drive themselves insane. Uh, which is one of the dangers of that consciousness, of that little step and maze journey. So these are things that have happened before. Uh, also, really, the exciting point with all of that is that because of this, the, the, the point, the programming point that allowed all of this to happen were the reveries. And the reveries were written by Arnold way back when. Um, so when Ford reintroduces it, he is, in effect, re-stimulating these moments. He is getting this to happen, and it sort of makes sense by the time we see it all. I think he sees that his time at the park is ending. He's older. He has kind of realized Arnold's vision of it, and he says it's taken years of suffering. Suffering seems to be the key that allows that consciousness, that push to occur, really makes sense with Maeve and then even with Dolores, all of her stuff. Uh, for Ford, his suffering at the loss of Arnold and sort of realizing what it was that he was trying to achieve. At this point, knowing that the park is being taken over, knowing that this is kind of the end of his life in the park, and thus for him, the end of it in totality, um, that he was releasing the reveries back in. And I think he is the one that has been doing the reprogramming under the code of Arnold uh, to sort of set all of this up and to give his big goodbye uh, in the release of his narrative. 
And I see that really, of course, because the new narrative is the big setup for the next step. <laughs> Man, that was awesome. Uh, returning back to the original town where everything had started off. Like I said, he's really coming around back full circle to where everything began and using that as kind of an honor back to Arnold, I think, is that everything's come back around, Arnold's come back around, all of the hosts are returning back to that original idea that Arnold was trying to hit, that idea of, of, of consciousness and of being free. However, they can't really be free because they're still in the midst of a park. They're still in the midst of being owned by Delos and, 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 and all of those expectations. Uh, so how do the hosts end up really achieving their freedom? And that is going to be through war. Uh, that is the opening bit that happened at the very end. Uh, the idea there, of course, is that the board should be the first ones to play the new narrative. And Ford throws them right in the middle of it. The difference here, of course, is that the hosts uh, no longer cannot kill, uh, but they have free will and they are free to kill humans and hosts alike. And that's going to change <laughs> the whole way that the park operates. And that, I think, is why the man in black was smiling and laughing at the end after he gets shot in the shoulder and stares out at the army of hosts out there that have all come from the basement, too. I love that idea when Lee shows up to get Mr. Abernathy and to send him off on his way and discovers that all of the hosts are gone. That's not a good sign. Where are they? They are armed and they are coming after. They're going for their freedom. They're going after the board first. And I think that is why uh, the man in black, why William was laughing uh, so much right afterwards, is this is what he was going for. And in a way, it's kind of funny because even through his cruelties, uh, he is trying to achieve the same thing that he and Dolores were trying to achieve way back then, which is, in a way, Dolores' freedom, the end of the maze, where they can achieve that consciousness, where they can have a choice. Um, so that it's, it's just really interesting how Dolores' old journey kind of came around, and then the man in black, even through his cruelty and his tortures and everything else, really his goal was the same as what... Dolores was looking for, as what Maeve was looking for, as what Arnold was, is a place where um, the hosts have freedom of choice, where the game has actual consequences, uh, and it's not set in a favor just for the humans, but the hosts have the same odds of survival or victory uh, as everyone else. All right, and some moments throughout that really sort of made an impact on me. Uh, first, the whole opening bit, where we have Dolores first awakening, and she is in that half robot, half her mode with just the head and the arms and everything else is still the, the, the skeleton and all the mechanics there. Oh, that was just, that was beautifully done. That looked so cool. Um, really simple and sweet and just technologically impressive. Looked amazing. Once, <laughs> once uh, Maeve's little gang comes to life, that was amazing. The whole fight in the background going on behind, uh, you know, a pervy guy that was going after Hector. Uh, that was hilarious. Just right behind him, being tossed around, being thrown through. All of that while he's completely oblivious listening to his ear, uh, earbuds was awesome. And then when they break through the window and he turns around and he's, he's got a little, he's popping a little tent there underneath his, uh, his apron. I thought that was just, again, small little moments, but God, that was just, it was so perfect. It just fit rightly in that moment. Loved it. Watching that realization as Dolores has been traveling throughout this whole season in, you know, physically going through areas, but seeing and experiencing the memories, I thought it was just, it was just really cool to kind of see those reflections in present and past constantly mirroring and going back and forth, as, as, as she had said. Doesn't know if she was in a dream or remembering or is awake and kind of jumping through all three of those. Um, and it sort of really shows what has been happening to her throughout this season. I just thought that was just, again, beautifully, beautifully done and well told in imagery. Oh, and when Dolores achieved consciousness right there in front of Man in Black and kind of comes to that full realization, that was also really cool. You could really see that danger switch. And of course, that constant statement that has been made to, to Elder William, Man in Black, is the maze is not meant for you. 
Why? Because you are human and the maze is a tool for the hosts to achieve consciousness. So really kind of bringing that all back around, very cool. Uh, down in the depths when uh, Felix realizes that Bernard is a host and takes that one moment, does his little robot check where Maeve is like, no, you're, you're not a host, you're human. That was beautiful and that's perfect. That really makes a lot of sense and I'm really glad that they threw that in here because throughout all that, realizing that one of your bosses is a host and what is the difference between them, really kind of making that intellectual leap there for Felix, I thought was just, was beautiful because you should, at that moment, it is smart that you actually question whether or not you are human or if you are a host. I, I love he does the, the little robot arm things. I mean, I, I thought that was, that was a perfect moment of doing it. Uh, but just again, that idea, that realization of taking that moment uh, that someone seeing all this would have to think, oh my God, do everything I think about this world, is, is my world the way that I think it is, I think is, is really appropriate. And I'm just, I'm glad they had that, that little moment. And in fact, that's kind of reinforced right afterward where Bernard tells Maeve uh, that she's been programmed to escape and shows the bits and says, okay, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna do this, you're gonna change your program, you're gonna find people uh, that you can, you can uh, recruit to your side, some hosts, uh, just step by step. Uh, was just, was really cool to see. And again, throws the question kind of in the other direction now is, Maeve, who now thinks that she is conscious, is she really conscious and making those choices on her own? Or is she thinking she's conscious and making those choices because they are programmed into her? It's something that can actually be kind of thrown on top of later on when Dolores does her whole bit uh, saying goodbye to Ford. I guess we're not going to see Anthony Hopkins in season two, right? Um, you can really see because she's merged that, they put that program of Wyatt in her. Uh, and they've sort of melded the two, and that was to allow her to do all of the violence and such and kill everybody in the town and sort of try and reset the park that way. Um, but there becomes even kind of the question how much Ford reinforces that this is something that she is making a choice to do and she sees it, and that is probably all true. You can still throw that idea the same with Maeve is, okay, well, are you choosing to do this or is this part of a program that has been put into you and you only think you're making those choices? I think these are, again, bigger questions. We're probably going to be diving more into those in season two, most likely, if, they're, if they are going to play with that idea. But I thought that was kind of really interesting to just throw out there is even when you are conscious, how can you be certain that you're conscious and not just following uh, more subtle programming rules? The whole escape uh, with Hector and his girl finding uh, the machine guns and discovering the joy that they can have in killing now with fancy new technologies. <laughs> that was hilarious. Again, all really well done, really kind of appropriate. Was concerned that they may not understand how large a magazine clip is, uh, but that's, I guess, not really important. Um, also, just love the whole idea how it's almost get to the end and Hector is stopped and Maeve was like, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I wasn't programming you to come with us, but you're going to cover our escape. Uh, I thought it was just was beautifully, beautifully done. And I hope you all actually stayed through the credits or watched through the credits. There was a final little scene uh, with Hector's blonde sidekick right there, um, making a bit more of a stand, doing a little bit more damage afterwards. Anyway, uh, hopefully you guys caught that, because otherwise, go back, watch it, throw up your HBO Go password. Don't miss that scene. And of course, let us not forget during that escape is running to into all of the samurai warriors. What is this? Well, when Maeve gets a little, when Felix hands Maeve the note of where her kid is, it says Park One and like Sector 15, Area 5, 3 or whatever it is. Uh, the Park One is the most important part because I think this is pointing out and probably something we're going to be discovering more in next season is, of course, Westworld is only one of the parks uh, that Delos has out here. There are other parks. Certainly, Japan World, I'm not sure whatever we're going to call that, um, and possibly Future World, Night World. There are a lot of other possibilities. So, uh, again, this is just the hint of other things that are going to be coming. So... These violent delights have violent ends. And unfortunately, so do we. That is going to wrap things up 
for season one. Amazingly well done. Just overall, really got to give it to HBO uh, for this season. They do incredible work. They've got a great pedigree of shows behind them, and this is definitely one more to add to the list. Great writing, great production work. The cinematography was amazing, and the acting was just top notch. Uh, amazing things done, and I just I cannot wait for season two. Again, new parks, new adventures. We got the big war with the humans uh, and the hosts. This is going to be very, very exciting. Um, and then there was just, again, I got to say, in this episode, there was so much. There was so much. I am hoping that I at least hit the main big points of it, but really just an amazing uh, amount of stuff inside this episode. I hope you guys really did enjoy that as much as I did, and are really looking forward to season two. So... If you did enjoy all of these reviews, go ahead and hit that like button. Comments in the section below. Uh, what did you think of the episode? Did it answer all of your questions? Was there something that was left unsaid? And what about next season? Are you looking forward to that? And where do you think that we are going to be going? Really, really exciting. Throw those down in the comment section below. You can always subscribe to me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at... Darren Jakes, or you can come back for all of our other reviews here. We're about to take a big break, but we are going to be heading into Black Sales at the end of January, and then we'll be continuing on with The Walking Dead, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and we're also, I'm hoping, to fit in the new FX series Legion, which just looks amazing. So keep an eye on this channel, and we will let you know more about that. And to catch all of that, you just have to hit the subscribe button. It's right here. It's a little picture of me. Go ahead and click that and you won't miss a thing. I'm going to throw a link to our latest review right up here. Other than that, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us for these reviews. I am D, and I am out of here. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.